IVF means in vitro fertilization. When fertilization occurs outside of the body, that's simply what it means. So for a woman to get pregnant, um, she'll have sexual intercourse. The sperm will be deposited in her vagina. It will swim up through the cervix, the womb, through the fallopian tubes, and then go to meet with the egg that has been released by the ovary. That fertilization occurs inside the body. But when we have that process of the sperm meeting the egg outside of the body, then we call it in vitro fertilization. That's simply what it is. You know, getting pregnant is easy for some people. For other people, it's, it's not as easy and it's not as simple. Some of them may already have reasons why getting pregnant naturally by themselves is difficult. Um, things like um, previous disease, um, cancer diagnosis, um, and treatment. Uh, even congenital, the way some people are born. Some people are born without a womb, without a uterus, but they have their ovaries. That's something we call the Mullerian agenesis spectrum. So there, people have different reasons why they would need assistance. So the, the, what science does is to be able to offer assistance to people who the sperm and the egg cannot meet within the body. And then science is able to do that in a lab and then be able to have that embryo. That's the potential human being. All of us started as embryos. So the potential human being reaches the embryo and then to put it back into a womb. So science just bypasses what the natural um, natural process would have done. I don't know if this question is linked to the last one I just asked. Maybe you will help us. Who is qualified to go for IVF? A woman just says, I can't get pregnant, therefore I want to go for IVF. Can anybody, <laughs> just, can anybody just wake up and say, oh, this IVF looks very interesting. I like the language. I want to go for it. Or someone has to meet a certain criteria or qualify for IVF. So yes, um, someone has to have, we call it an indication, a reason. You know, so that person would have, you know, seen a doctor and they would have had a diagnosis of infertility. That means they've been having regular unprotected sexual intercourse for 12 months and they haven't been able to achieve pregnancy. So when they've done all that, or even for some women, we use six months, especially when there is an indication that warrants an earlier intervention. So, um, for example, uh, let's say one of the couple has had um, maybe cancer in the past, and they've had to have chemotherapy. They already have an indication. We are not going to be waiting another one year after they get married because we know that there's a reason why these people may struggle to get pregnant. So there has to be a reason why IVF, because it's not just a, it's not like Panadol. You just go to the pharmacy and say, give me Panadol over there and they give you, yes. So there has to be an indication. The reason why the um, pregnancy hasn't come about naturally would have been evaluated. Is it from the male side? Is it from the female side? Is it a combination of both? Because there are couples who have a combination of both factors. And then is it that it's even unexplained? They've had several tests and all the tests are fine, but they are still not getting pregnant. So unexplained infertility itself is also an indication for, um, for IVF. Um, for some people, it may be that there's, um, you know, maybe for their job. So you may have some something like um, on a career pathway, there are certain periods where, you may, for example, maybe a soldier, you have to be away for some years fighting. You can do some type of IVF procedures to be able to ensure that your family life can continue, your genetic line can continue, should in case something happens in the war front. So those are so those are some of the indications why it may not be it definitely won't be the same for everybody who is coming in for IVF, but there has to be a cogent reason why that person is coming for an IVF procedure. What is the process like? So a woman is thinking to go for IVF. She and her partner they are considering 
maybe IVF, but she's scared. The unknown is so much to her. So could you help us break what would happen, what she should expect if she should go for IVF? Okay, so um, in a natural cycle, the woman will grow one egg, and then it is that one egg that will be released uh, during ovulation. And it is that one egg that is released that the sperm will, you know, at the time, if she has sexual intercourse around the time of ovulation, it is that one egg that the sperm will also fertilize. Now, in an IVF cycle, we'll usually be doing what we call a controlled ovarian hyperstimulation. We will be, we're looking at getting more than one egg because we want to maximize that cycle. However, we also don't want it to be so much that it's going to jeopardize the woman's health by having complications. So that's why we call it control. Uh, I, the way I explain it to my patients is those, those who are old enough to have driven manual cars, you know how you have to do um, some balancing with the accelerator and the clutch, exactly. Mm. So you give some medications to grow the eggs, but you give some medications to ensure that they are not too exuberant. Now, when we do that um, stimulation, we, we scan regularly to ensure that the sizes of the egg follicles we see on scan get to maturity. When we've, when we've gotten to the size of maturity, then we do what we call a trigger. That's to cause that ovulation that occurs inside the body to now make it occur in a, in a timely fashion whereby before it is released into the abdomen, you know, the ovary is within the abdomen. And there are other things there. There's the bowel, the intestine, there's the bladder and all of that. And the eggs are really microscopic. So if the ovary releases them, we, we can't get them again. So we time it so that we can then do what we call an oocyte retrieval. So at a particular time after giving the trigger, we then go in and do an oocyte retrieval in theater under light sedation. So it's, it's it, the, the woman is under anesthesia, but it's not as deep as if she's having a major, major surgery. And it's usually 20, 30 minutes and she's awake, she can go home. So that egg that has now been retrieved is handed over to the scientist. And the scientist now places the egg and the sperm together. And a lot of processes go on. They can either inject the sperm into the egg directly or they incubate them and then wait for fertilization. So in 24 hours after that, we'll be able to know how many of those eggs were fertilized and have now formed embryos. That means there has been a combination of the genetic material from the woman, genetic material from the man, and it has formed a brand new human being. And that is how all of us started. We all started from one egg, one sperm. We formed one embryo, and then we continue to divide into many cells, and then we are here today. So when we have that fertilization, then we begin to monitor that embryo to see that it is growing well, and then we then transfer it, depending on different parameters, which are technicalities. We then take that embryo and then put it back into the woman's uterus and then wait for approximately two weeks. The two weeks period, it also mimics the mid cycle of ovulation to next menses. So if we do a pregnancy test two weeks after embryo transfer and it's positive, then we know that that woman definitely is pregnant. If we do it and it's negative, then we know she's not pregnant. Ma, so, so when that, you say a negative meaning that after implanting um the egg that we fertilized it did not yes. stay in the very late it didn't, word. It yeah. didn't. so yeah. yes it didn't stay so usually the embryo even in natural cycle the embryo is formed and then it is swept back into the womb and then about day four day six between day four and six it attaches to the lining of the womb and then embeds itself it is when it has embedded itself and elaborates that pregnancy hormone that we can test it in the blood. But if that attachment and embedding is not successful, we won't get that hormone, and so we will not have a pregnancy. I know that 
some people might be scared about the side effects because women have heard before you go for IVF, you might take some medications, maybe they might give you injections and the rest. So should a woman expect any side effects? If yes, what would those side effects look like? That is if there are, and um, okay. how do you manage those side effects? Okay, so um, in medicine, there's almost nothing that doesn't have a side effect. Even Panadol, taking in excessive quantities will have side effects. So, and then the medications we use are hormonal. Um, they have their own side effects. Um, some of them are mild. Some of them are related to the mode of treatment. So um, most of them are injections. So side effects such as pain at the injection sites, redness, swelling, those are some of them. Those ones can be managed by, you know, appropriate technique. So if it should be a deep, into the muscle um, injection is given deep into the muscle, not at the surface. If it's supposed to be under the skin, just a little bit under the skin, then it's given that way. If there's any redness or swelling, um, ice packs can help with that. Um, so those are some of the mild ones. Um, I have some of my patients complain about uh, mood swings, headaches, swelling of their legs, you know, and those are hormone-based. Some of those can just be, um, if they know about it before the treatment, you know, it makes it easy. So, okay, yes, the doctor mentioned I may experience this. But if suddenly they find their legs just swelling up, they, they may get worried, you know. And so the full spectrum of side effects may not occur in one person. They may just have one minor one, one um, really, really bothersome one. But yes, there are side effects like that. There are side effects. My my next question would be on the IVF working. A woman says she's going for IVF, she has done the cycle, and then they are saying she's not pregnant. So is it possible that a woman can actually go for IVF after the whole counseling, the whole discussion, and the embryo has been inserted, but it's not working? Is, is there a possibility? And if it does happen how do you help the patient come out of that space of it not working that's that's a very great question um the practice of fertility it's a very emotive one both for the patients and even the doctor as well um mm. one of the ways to explain this is that it's not every cycle that's every monthly cycle where a fertile young couple are having sex at the time of ovulation that they get pregnant otherwise will be more than 200 and something million in nigeria so there are times that there's the, the man is fine the woman is fine they are having sex at the same at the time that ovulation is occurring but they are not getting pregnant even though they are not using contraception so that's that can also occur in IVF. It's just that you now have to isolate, you know, the different things that make up pregnancy. Is the egg there? Is the sperm good? Is the quality of the embryo good? Was the lining of the womb okay? Those are the things that you check, check, check the boxes to be able to say, okay, this is one reason why this should work. This is one reason why this may not work. Um, one of the really important aspects of IVF practice is counseling. Counseling because um, it's important for the couple to know that even though they and the team are expecting a positive result, there is the chance that it may not work that first time. There's even the chance it may not work a second time. I don't know if you get me. So it, it, it doesn't mean there's something wrong with the process itself. Yes, there may be adjustments. Okay, maybe use this drug, use that drug. But there's nobody who can really tell you that once you do it once like this, you must get pregnant. It, it, otherwise, we would have been playing God. <laughs> so there's still that aspect of IVF that you cannot, you cannot, you know, put your hand on your chest and say, I did it. You can't, you can't do that. 
So the counseling takes, um, the counseling addresses that part. That even if everything checks out, the ovarian reserve is great, the semen count is fine, the quality of embryos were good, the endometrium on scan was great, there may still be a negative pregnancy test, meaning that cycle did not work. It doesn't mean that they must give up. I've had patients who the first cycle failed and they broke down thinking, oh, then there's no hope. And I said, no, you can't do that. You have embryos left. The embryos are good grades and you have your womb is fine. There's no fibroid or anything obstructing. Let's try again. And second time around, they get pregnant. And they're like, oh, but why didn't it happen the first time? And I don't know. <laughs> I can't lie that I know. But I knew that if all those aspects had checked out, it was a matter of trying again. It was bound to happen. I wouldn't have been able to say, oh, it's the second time it will be. It may have been the third time. But that's the honest truth. It's just to check those boxes and see that there are actually no problems in all those areas before you go ahead. And that's the power of a complete evaluation before you even get to the IVF. It's not just, oh, uh, I want to do IVF tomorrow. No, all those things must have checked out so that if there are, for example, if a woman comes in and says she wants to do IVF and she has a huge fibroid like it's like eight months, I know that I can't go ahead with that IVF. Because then, when we have the embryo, where are we going to put the embryo into? Even if she gets pregnant and has a miscarriage, it's still a loss for that IVF because there was no live birth from that IVF. So all the evaluation must check out before the couple proceed with the IVF. So counseling oh, helps. Mm. Yes, counseling helps to say, do the evaluations let's know if there are any problems however while we are aiming for a positive result there is the chance it's just like life all of us wake up in the morning and go out of the house but nobody goes out of their house expecting to fall into a gutter on that day but it may happen you may just miss a miss a footing and then you know fall so it's it's just that way it may happen it's a risk in IVF treatment, but the reward of a positive outcome far outweighs it. 